Fernando Alonso has had some pretty dramatic weekends in Formula 1 during his career, but the United States Grand Prix this year has to be up there with the best. Or maybe the worst, but we'll come to that later. He raged at other drivers, his new teammates sent him into the stratosphere, and he pulled off an incredible recovery drive. Let's break down the two-time title winner's weekend and tell you why he was furious at a few drivers on the grid. On a race weekend we thought would be dominated by talk of budget caps and Red Bull, it was great to see the likes of Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso taking the headlines. The United States Grand Prix produced probably the best race of the season, with three outstanding storylines. Max Verstappen fought back from an 11-second pit stop to pass his two biggest rivals and clinch a first constructors title in nine years for a team that had lost its leader and creator less than 24 hours before. Lewis Hamilton came as close as he has so far this year to a win, only to succumb to the inevitable and lose out to the Verstappen steamroller in the end. And Fernando Alonso produced one of the drives of the season and one of the races of his long and illustrious career to finish seventh in a car damaged in a 180 mile an hour crash in which it did a wheelie, smash back into the ground and then a wall, and he dropped to the back of the field. If you didn't see the race and this is the first time you're hearing someone describe his race, then it's fine that you don't believe me because it really was unbelievable. Even by Alonso's high standards, his performance will go down in memory as probably the greatest drive to have never got points. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that bit, didn't I? Before I give you the shocking end to this unbelievable story though, I want to talk about a cause close to Alonso's heart, protecting the environment. You know how Formula 1 is trying to be net carbon zero by 2030? Well, we have an amazing sponsor today which can help you be a part of that. Established Titles are an incredible company that's preserving the natural woodlands of Scotland and helping with global reforestation. This amazing last-minute gift makes you the owner of one square foot of land in Edelston, Scotland, and Established Titles plants a tree with the global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future with every purchase. Saving the planet is obviously amazing, and Alonso would be proud, but this gift grants the recipient something even cooler. There's an old Scottish tradition of calling landowners lairds, which is lord or lady to those of you who don't live in 15th century Scotland. By gifting someone land in Scotland, you give them the right to call themselves a lord or lady, and they get a certificate to prove it. Sir Lewis Hamilton sounds okay, but Lord Lewis Hamilton would sound way better. Maybe we should get him one. Anyway, you can add Lord or Lady to your credit card, plane tickets or even your paddock pass at the next F1 race with this gift. The first 200 people who purchase a title pack using our link will get the plot pretty much directly next to mine. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm a Lord now and I expect you to refer to me by that title in the comments. This isn't just an amazing last-minute gift, we could also start our own little Scottish kingdom. Established Titles is actually running a massive early Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you use the code F1REVERSE, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com forward slash F1REVERSE to get your gifts now and help support the channel. I'm actually going to buy one of these for Fernando Alonso after his performance in America because he is definitely worthy. His weekend started in a typically fiery manner. If you cast your mind back a few weeks to the Belgian Grand Prix, when Hamilton attempted an ambitious move on Alonso, launching himself up into the air and furthermore out of the race. Alonso responded to this incident in typical fashion, with a radio message telling his team that Hamilton is an idiot and that the seven-time world champion only knows how to drive when he starts in first place. He apologized at the time, but Hamilton has got in Alonso's bad books again this week. This time, it was Hamilton blocking him during practice that brought out Alonso's angry side, telling his team over the radio that Hamilton has no mirrors today. Perhaps Alonso needs to get stuck in with Hamilton more often, because it clearly brings out the best in him. Esteban Ocon's performance showed that the Alpine wasn't at its fastest in America, making Alonso's drive even more impressive. It was during the race that Fernando really had reason to get angry, though. The Spaniard started 14th, another victim of an engine penalty before working his way up to 8th. Lance Stroll, Alonso's new teammate for next year, started really strongly as well. Russell's attempt at emulating the Bottas bowling incident from Hungary last year meant Stroll was racing in 3rd early on. Thanks to a terrible pit stop, Stroll dropped down the field. By the time the safety car was coming in after Bottas's spin on lap 19, Lance was running in 7th ahead of Alonso. 
On the main straight, Alonso had a huge slipstream off the Aston Martin and went to make a move past Stroll before the Canadian tried a defensive move so bad that it would have caused a fist fight at my local karting track. Stroll turned to block Alonso late, causing the Alpine to drive up the back of the Aston Martin and sending him so high in the air, Alonso almost turned up on the radar system of the nearby airport. Lance had to retire with his car in pieces, but Fernando managed to carry on after stopping for a new front wing. He dropped to the back of the pack and proceeded to fight his way up to sixth in a damaged car, before being passed by Lando Norris's McLaren on fresher tyres on the final lap. It was the kind of jaw-dropping entertainment that keeps fans watching even though the championships are decided. It was not nice, Alonso said after the race. When you're up in the air, you're not aware of where you are on track, and I thought that I was much more on the left, and obviously if you catch the lateral fence, the metallic one, you spin in the air and do a 360. You see these kinds of accidents a lot in IndyCar, and they are quite dangerous, so I thought I would end up on that fence. Incredibly, Alonso landed flat on the floor with all four wheels on the track before hitting the wall. The only thing that stopped him from actually taking off was that his rear tires left the track just enough that they couldn't provide any more acceleration to send him the rest of the way round. If that would have happened, the accident could have been much, much worse. Alonso carried on to say, When the car landed on the track, I thought, okay, this is all safe. The car for sure is going to be broken, but this is what it is and I drove slowly to the pit, thinking we would retire the car. I was surprised when they changed the tires and front wing and sent me out. I said, okay, it's just a test, but they'll call me in the next lap or whatever. But no, the car was okay when they checked it visually, everything was fine, so we kept going. His charge from last to seventh was unbelievable, after the severity of the collision, but his tail had one more twist in America. He was able to continue, but did so with his right side mirror hanging from the car before eventually falling off. Haas, who've had three black and orange flags already this season for pieces of bodywork hanging loosely from the car, protested. You can't be angry at Haas for wanting to see other teams pulled up with this rule because it's hurt their season so far this year. The protest was declared successful with FIA technical delegate Joe Bauer saying, A flapping mirror was dangerous and it could come loose and hit another car causing injury. The stewards gave Alonso a 10-second stop-go penalty after the race, which was converted into a 30-second time penalty, dropping the Spaniard to 15th. The stewards said they were deeply concerned that car 14, Alonso's, was not given the black and orange flag, or at least a radio call to rectify the situation, despite two calls to race control by the Haas team. Notwithstanding the above, Article 3.2 of the Formula 1 sporting regulations is clear. A car must be in safe condition throughout a race and in this case, car 14 was not. This is a responsibility of the Alpine team. It's good that the FIA have pointed out their mistake that Alonso should have been flagged during the race, but like they say in the statement, it is Alpine's responsibility to deal with the problem during the race. Who knows where Alonso may have ended up if he was flagged during the race, but a drive of that quality was deserving of championship points. If Lance Stroll was expecting his new teammate to become his best friend and mentor, then he definitely isn't going about ingratiating him in the right way. Alonso might be one of the meanest fighters on an F1 track, but even he knows that sometimes you need to accept a place is gone. What did you think of Alonso's drive in Austin? Does it rank with his best in your opinion? Let us know what you think in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and remember to call me Lord.